What's up, Dart people, Flutter people? Let's talk about lists. Lists. It's hard to say. Arrays. Dart calls them lists. All right, here we go. So we're on the language tour, annotated docs. We're talking about arrays, otherwise known as lists in, um, in Dart. Perhaps the most common collection in nearly every programming language is the array or ordered group of objects. In Dart, arrays are lists, objects. Uh, most people just call them lists. They look a lot like JavaScript, so this is an example of a simple Dart list. Let's play around with it. Okay. We've got ourselves a variable. It's inferring that the type is list. Okay. Let's just print our list. There we go. Okay, so there's our list, one, two, three. Um, this is kind of the same thing. It's inferring the type here. Oop, not array, hello, it's a list. Okay, so that, that adds that, come on. Um, or you could specifically say, hey, we're gonna have a list of integers. Um, once you, not capital I N T, lowercase. Okay, there you go. If we took, let's say we wanna add something like, let's add null to the list. Well, we can't do that because we've said all the types are gonna be int, but as soon as we take that away, I think we can do that, okay? Um, the thing about a list when it says it's an ordered group of objects, um, so for example, this is in position zero, this is at uh, position or index one, at three, and so on. So I could say at uh, index one, I should get the number two, because it's a zero ordered, okay? So it's gonna return that. Um, a hash or a map, as it's called in, in Dart, is going to be an unordered, Okay, we haven't done those yet, but those are an unordered group of objects. Um, because you call, you get the value by calling the key um, in those types of objects. But these, we just give it the index. Um, and because it's ordered, uh, we pull it out like that. Okay. Okie dokie. So Dart infers that list has type list int. Okay, so we showed that just a second ago. If you try to add non-integer objects to this list, the analyzer raises a runtime error. For more information, read about type inference. Okay, so we covered that. Ah, this is another thing that I really like, is adding a comma after the last item in the Dart Collection literal. Okay, so if I want to do this and, well, I can't really save. Does it format it? Yes, it does. Okay, so you click that form button in DartPad. Uh, if you save it in your IDE, uh, and uh, Android Studio, IntelliJ, or uh, VS Code. It should um, <clears throat> it should format it uh, on new lines when every single item ends with a comma. Okay, if I take that away and say format, it puts it all on one line. Okay, so you'll see this in Flutter a lot where the last thing is like that. This is also nice. Um, you know, I know it's comma separated and it's kind of weird to have a trailing comma, but if I were to do a, um, a git uh, operation, like git add the changes, if I wanted to add something else here, like hello. If I didn't have this here to begin with, and I had to add this comma, all of a sudden I'm changing two lines. Okay, so that's that's one extra line that you have to actually look at in a, um, a, a, a diff of your new code and your old, old code. Uh, so by having this on here at the end to begin with, whenever I add a new, oops, whenever I add a new line, okay, and add the value followed by a comma, that's going to be the new line. If I add something again next time, you know, like another number, let's just give it a, a double, something like that, um, then it's just going to add that one line because I didn't have to put this character on this line. Um, so there's uh, good reasons to do it formatting consistency with everybody else who's programming Dart or Flutter and the, the, the Git differences. And that's bright.
Okay. Okay, so this talked about adding a comma to the last item, okay. It doesn't affect it, but it can help prevent copy-paste errors, so that's good. So do that in Dart, please. So list used zero base indexing. This is common, I believe. Uh, it's the same way in JavaScript. It's the same way in Ruby uh, for the array. Uh, so zero is the first thing. Um, the overall, um, the last index is list.length minus one. Um, you can get a list length and refer to the list values just as you would in JavaScript. So let's just play around with these real quick. Okay, let's format. Okay, we've got ourselves a list here. Remember, assert doesn't really work in Darpad. Um, let's just comment that out because that looks like a separate kind of like little problem. Um, let's just print. Okay, is the is the length of this list, is it three? One, two, three. It's just gonna do a count. Okay, so I'm expecting that to be true. Um, if I print this list, um, get the element at index one. So we go zero, one, two is equal to two, it's true. So both of those should be true. And they are. Okay, so let's uncomment these last ones. We'll comment that out. Um, oops, we need that base list that we're referring to. So list at position one, we're reassigning it now, okay? So this is assignment. Um, so, we're, so now it's gonna be one, two, three is, is kind of like what this uh, I think is going to look like. Oops. Okay, because at position one, which used to be a two, we assigned the value of one. So now that's what our list looks like. Okay, so now let's print list one equal equal one. Yes, that should be true. Um, I think that was from a previous thing. Okay, and it's true. Okay, so there's just some simple operations um, that we're doing on a list. To create a list that's a compile time constant, add const before the list literal. Okay, let's do that real quick. I'm not sure exactly where you would use this in, in real life. Um, I'm just gonna print out constant list. Oops. Close that off. So we're going to print that. It's still probably going to print just like it would like that um, with or without this const, right? Get rid of that, run it. It's going to print the same looking thing. Um, yeah, so I think the only thing this does is at compile time, uh, when the program is compiled, it it creates like a little, carves out a little section of memory or whatever and says, there is this this object that I'm creating at the time of compilation, and it create, it contains this array, this list with the values one, two, and three, in that order. Now at runtime, this um, this variable constant list comes into existence and is then associated with that this constant. If you didn't have const here, if that was no longer there, I think there wouldn't be this this bit of uh, memory or whatever, if that's how it works, when the program is compiled. Um, this wouldn't be allocated to take up that space. Instead, at runtime, this guy on the right side would be brought into memory, it would be instantiated, if you will, as like, list.new or whatever it is, you know, like the list constructor uh, to create that object at that time and then would be assigned. Um, okay. So I'm going to uncomment this. It says it will cause an error. That's when I had const in the front. So right now it's probably just going to reassign it and say 113. Okay, there it is. Um, but let's put const there. And so each time this runs, oops. Yeah, we were expecting that, right? Unsupported operation index set. Um, not a very helpful error message, but you can see we don't have like a um, 
uh, one of those just like warning messages at for, for runtime. It's not really telling us the analyzer isn't catching this. Um, but yeah. Okay, so that is a, um, a constant list. Okay, um, this is kind of newer stuff. This, my jury's still out on the spread operator. I don't, I don't know that I've really enjoyed it that much. Um, but it's, it's popular, it's in JavaScript, um, so Dart uses it. Uh, let's see how to use it. Um, I think of like getting peanut butter out of a jar and spreading it on a piece of toast. Um, that's how I think of the spread operator. <laughs> okay, um, and then there's the null aware spread operator, which is similar. Um, insert multiple values. Okay, let's take let's take this first example, and we'll just play with it. It's the best way to get a feel for what it does. We have a list, and then, uh, for example. If you had list two and you wanted to add the list, you might have to do something like concatenation or a plus sign, you know, something like this. Like, does this work? Remember, you can't assert, you have to print. So list two dot length, I wonder if that's a list uh, length of four. Let's find out. Okay, that's true. What if we just print um, list two? Did it do the spready thing that I thought it was going to do? Okay, it looks like it did. Okay, so if you didn't want to say, here's my first array and now I'm going to add another array and hope that they just kind of get squashed together, you could spread this original list into um, list number two. Okay, did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of um, syntactic sugar, if you will, if you're comfortable with, with how that looks. Um, yeah, so I did the plus sign earlier to see if that's the way I was able to do that. The add uh, method on a list looks like it just adds a single value, so it pushes a value onto the end. Um, add all, I don't know if that would work. It's an iterable. Could I just add list here? That's something I can do. Just take that original one, add add all. Okay, that doesn't do it. Um, yeah, so the only way I know to really do it now is the spread operator and the plus sign. Okay, so that, that was the gist of that spread operator. Um, if the expression to the right might be null, you can avoid exceptions by using the null aware spread operator. So let's do this. Okay, I'll take away my bracket. Let's format. Maybe we can't assert. We need to print. Uh, so this list, var list, like so, um, if it's nil at the time, which it is right here, okay, it hasn't been initialized with any value. List two is just going to be um, effectively like zero oops, plus list. Okay, so if we add that, that's going to add null um, to this list. And so let's let's see what happens there. Type error. JS null is not a subtype of list int. Okay, so this this type in Darpad is of type JS null. Um, in regular Dart, I think it's just null. Um, so let's get rid of that. Okay. Now, if we're going to oops, protect ourselves, now we'll just try to spread in list. We don't know, maybe in our program, if it's going to be null or not, but let's see. Okay. So that's that's true because the length, the length is 1. We just printed list 2. I bet we're just going to see a 0. Okay, so in this case, um, it actually didn't append or you know push onto the end a null value, effectively changing the length from one to two. Okay, if we take away 
the optional looking thing. Did they call it an optional here? I need to still get my jargon down. The null aware spread operator, but they don't actually say what that question mark is necessarily. Okay. Yeah, they didn't like that either. Okay, because that is effectively that. Should get the same error. And we do. So anytime you just see a declared variable, you can think that it's actually being assigned a value of null. Okay, and if something might be null, oh, we're gonna put this optional thing in, okay. So that is how that works. Cool. All right, for more details and examples, uh, there you go. Dart also offers collection if and collection for, which you can use to build collections using conditionals and repetition. Here's an example. Okay, so this is a way to build a list or an array um, conditionally, uh, like on the fly inside the dang thing. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna format this. Um, I'm gonna put a comma here at the end so I can That's weird. Maybe you can't do that. Okay. Hi. What's the error? Promo active. Okay. So let's just say we have a variable. It's going to be a boolean. Promo active. Let's say it's initialized as true. Okay. Now let's um, print nav. Like so. Okay, so we have home, furniture, plants, and then we said only put outlet there if um, if that's true. If for something like somewhere else in our program that's somehow set to false, I get some error, some info warning. Try removing the code or fixing the code before so it can be reached. So it's basically saying this can never be reached because this is now false. Um, if we put final, I don't know that you would know that that's going to be that at the time. But it does know. Okay. Don't know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another way you could do this, you could say if promo active. Now we're going to take our nav and we're going to add outlet. Okay, and then we're going to print nav. Uh, let's get rid of that code. Okay, so note, note that we don't, any longer we don't have the, um, what they call a collection if. All right. And we've kind of written it this way. Okay, if we change that to true. All right, so it's kind of cool that if you really wanted to, you can put conditional logic inside your list literal. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Just be aware you can do that. Uh, collection four, that seems complicated. I don't want to look at that right now, but it's the same concept. You can do something inside the array itself, inside the list. Like so. <gasps> Excuse me. All right, for more details and examples of using collection, okay. So you can go read more about it there. Uh, the list type has many handy methods for it. manipulating lists. For more information about lists, see generics and collections. Um, Yeah, so nav is a list. We can say nav dot, and there's all of our methods. It's pretty cool. The class list itself has a bunch of methods on its own. Okay, but for our purposes, we're not getting that deep. Um, 
yeah, that's it for, for Lisp. Um, they're like an array in other languages, what they're called. Um, you access them by their index. You can iterate over them. Um, you can build them conditionally. Uh, you can spread them together. Make a nice PB and J of lists, different kind of lists. Um, yep, yeah. and that's it. That's it on lists. Uh, next time we'll be going over sets. See you then.